Contrary to what we might assume living as we do in a material world, particles only rarely come together to form whole atoms. A non-atomic plasma is the main constituent of the universe, more than 99% of it. The important point is that from this perspective, atomic matter is exceptional and rare. So if life in its basic state could be inorganic and is not made out of atomic matter, we can suggest that on some level, it is made out of pre-atomic matter, namely the plasma. This led researchers like Professor Robert Temple to suggest that we and all living things in the universe, whether organic or inorganic, arise from this plasma, and that the organic state is secondary to our fundamental nature as plasma beings. In fact, the Earth-Moon system is thrown into two giant clouds that are made of plasma. These large charged dust clouds in space are known as dusty complex plasmas. In our solar system, these are called the Kordelewski clouds, and they are potential examples of inorganic life that has existed for billions of years. They may have had a role in forming this planet throughout its long cosmic history. They may even have helped create organic life. The particles inside them and the dust interact with great intensity and complexity evolving highly complex patterns that in certain circumstances are in some sense alive and can evolve intelligence. So, for example, that much of what ancient Egyptians called spiritual double could be really plasma, and that double world exists all around us and in us. Now, theoretically, many spiritual experiences reported throughout human history could be really encounters with plasma phenomena or with life forms as plasma entities. The plasma was intensively researched by the military and governments starting back in the 50s. For us, the following key discoveries will be important. Giroyuki Ikezi correctly predicted that plasma could exist as crystals. This is one of the key discoveries because crystals can play a vital role in storing information in ways necessary for the evolution of intelligence and for communication. Gary Selwyn and his team published a discovery that plasma actually manufactured dust out of nothing and that the dust found inside fusion reactors was created by the plasma itself. Single molecules of dust grew naturally from nanometer sizes up to micrometer sizes within the plasma. This changed the whole of the science of plasma research. Scientist Vadim Tsaitovich reported for many years on advanced findings from dusty complex plasma research, showing that something which looks very lifelike can be produced in charged dust clouds. In this article, he stated clearly, quote, it is concluded that complex self-organized plasma structures exhibit all the necessary properties to qualify them as candidates for inorganic living matter that may exist in space, provided certain conditions allow them to evolve naturally. Living matter requires internal architecture and that the dust structures are separated from one another by voids. Tsaitovich and other authors published a major paper related to this topic in which they pointed out that in order to be stable, a dust cloud must self-organize and fill itself with clumps and internal structure. If a dust cloud remains smooth, it disintegrates. They also said that such stable clouds can be as small as one thousandth the size of the Earth and still cohere. And they further add that this is all possible while remaining invisible. They also discuss that there are giant spherical cosmic clouds that are much bigger than our Kordelewski clouds. And the giant ones are also seen as forming an interstellar space between the stars in a far thinner medium. In another paper, researchers stressed how plasma crystals inside the dusty complex plasmas could spontaneously form helical structures resembling DNA. They discovered complex plasmas may naturally self-organize themselves into stable interacting helical structures that exhibit features normally attributed to organic living matter. The DNA in humans has functions of storing and communicating information. So the crucial question raised here is, could helical structures in plasma have the same function? 
And could these be the seeds of an alternative life form? The authors go on to say, quote, Can faster evolution rates be achieved for non-organic structures, in particular in space, consisting mostly of plasmas and dust grains, spread almost everywhere in the universe? If yes, then the question is, are the above necessary requirements of self-organization into a kind of living creature present in plasmas containing dust grains? The paper states that helical dust structures can replicate, in other words, like helical DNA molecules but inside dust clouds. Such helical structures in plasma have the unique property of memory marks or bifurcations. These bifurcations in the plasma crystals can then store information with these unusual memory marks that is impossible in common crystals. It's important that the helical crystals are always surrounded by self-created dust convection cells. Once formed, they start resembling features similar to those of DNA. In particular, they can transfer information from one helical structure to another via the dust convective cells surrounding by any bifurcation of the helical structure. Inorganic living entities then could be formed that compete for food in the form of sources of incoming plasma, which they eat. In the case of the Kordelewski clouds, most of their food consists of the solar wind coming from the sun. An important moment is if this happens at a far faster rate of evolution than is the case with organic life, then in its development would outpace organic evolution by billions of years, hence clearly gaining dominance. And frankly, there is no reason why such clouds cannot be the size of a whole galaxy. Robert Temple adds one more thought. Try and imagine the intelligence of a plasma cloud the size of a galaxy. People are always talking about intelligent life in space and wondering where they are, but they may be hiding in plain sight. From this point of view, we as organic humans are rather primitive latecomers to a fantastically ancient tradition of inorganic life forms. After all, who needs little green men when you've got gigantic intelligent clouds on your doorstep? which are billions of times more intelligent than any little green men could ever be, billions of years older than any possible organic life form, and the entities who must in effect be the true masters of the universe. With dust made by the plasma itself replacing atoms as the building blocks, living bodies can be formed. We might consider the charged dust to be dust molecules, and from them, charged plasma entities can emerge by the process called self-organization. That means that no outside source needs to create them, as they can create themselves. By this means, plasma people can exist, who are imperceptible to the optical nerves of the physical people who are made not of plasma, but of flesh and blood. Because we are incapable of directly perceiving the plasma people, we do not know they are there. And furthermore, they may be of such diffuse matter that they can pass through our dense physical matter and emerge intact. It's interesting that back in the Soviet Union, David Frank Kamenetsky suggested that plasma may exist not only in space, but within living organisms, or as ancient Egyptians believed, as our double. Now at the beginning, we mentioned that the concept of light was an important aspect of a man's double. Ancient Egyptians believed in the soul's radiant or star-like nature. There is considerable unanimity amongst many of the mystical texts that men and higher entities alike have souls that are radiant and glowing spheres, or intelligent plasmoids as we would call them today. Those who are familiar with Christian tradition remember key events in the New Testament, such as the Transfiguration, where Jesus appeared radiant in glory, and the Pentecost, where tongues of light appeared hovering over the heads of the apostles, also seem suggestive of plasma and plasmas. And finally, there is the Book of the Dead, which is well known to us under this name, but this name has nothing to do with Egypt. This name was invented by modern European scientists. In fact, the genuine name of these texts in Egypt was Book of Coming Forth by Day. In ancient Egypt, the god Ptah was said to have created the world by his speech that consisted of light. 
It seems that the ancient people were trying to convey the concept of expelled, structured breath entering into a surrounding medium, but retaining its own form, and thus constituting matter. Since we now know that the universe is a seething ocean of plasma, and as it has now been proven that plasma makes dust, and that dust is matter, it is legitimate to consider that the material universe has been extruded from and created by the universal plasma. In other words, the 1% is the creation of the 99%. And looked at from that perspective, ancient Egyptian views of the creation of matter are justified. Ultimately, we are all children of plasma. The Egyptians would say we are the progeny of Ptah. The Christian view is that we are the children of God. And a Hindu might say we are all the creation of the great universal spirit Brahma. The other early creation legends of in the beginning was undifferentiated chaos, or as the ancient Egyptians said, the goddess Nut, who was a great cosmic sea, and the Torah and the Old Testament that speak of the waters are all effectively saying the same. All physical matter did indeed emerge from the vast universal sea of plasma.